I think it would be safe to say that if you approve this reroute, then you have successfully met the directives of the Nebraska legislature. And you will have provided them with the outcome that they are seeking. It may not, however, be a decision that is in the best interest of Nebraska nor Nebraska citizens. While the reroute is a modest improvement over the original route, it still fails to address all of the inherent risks to our land and water that are associated with this project. And no doubt, it will still force Nebraska landowners to subsidize the private enterprise of a foreign corporation. And if there's one point of contention for me personally, that is it. Why should any American landowner subsidize a private enterprise especially of a foreign corporation. I think everyone is smart enough to realize that when the citizens of Nebraska demanded a reroute, we were thinking of some type of a substantial move away from the sand hills and the office. We were not thinking of some token move based off of an arbitrary line drawn on a map. You know, TransCanada has had every opportunity to do the right thing, and yet they persist down the same old path. It's either their way or no way. So why has TransCanada been so reluctant to do the right thing? I guess it is because they think they have the political power to get whatever they want, and therein lies the problem. This issue has become so politically charged that common sense has been abandoned by many of our political leaders. And it's no longer an issue of doing it and getting it done right. Instead, it has become an issue of getting it done now, regardless of the consequences. Unfortunately, the folks bearing the burden of this get it done now mindset might well be the citizens of Nebraska. With our most viable natural resources on the line, we as Nebraskans can ill afford to make a hurried or reckless decision on the Keystone XL. The decisions we make now could have a profound effect on the future generations of Nebraska. There's no denying the fact that this pipeline, as it ages and deteriorates, it will become more prone to leaks. And I find this prospect especially disturbing when there has been no full disclosure as to the, to the toxic chemicals that this pipeline will be carrying. I really hate to think that a hurried or short-sighted decision made now by our public officials to leave our grandchildren or our great-grandchildren with a contaminated water supply. From my perspective, Nebraska citizens are being asked to be guinea pigs for a monumental and still experimental project of unknown consequences. <coughs> the only thing we know for sure is that the inherent risk of this pipeline far outweigh any temporary economic benefits derived from this project. And long after the welders have returned to Arkansas, this pipeline will still be boiling away in Nebraska soil, threatening our land and our water for years to come. <clears throat> I want to make just one other notation while I have a chance. I don't know all the state senators, uh, but looking around the crowd, I saw one here tonight that I recognized, and that was Annette Dubois. Yes. So where are the rest of these people? Where's our government? We have a critical issue facing our, our state. And let's face it, those guys got us into this mess <laughs> with their hurry up of get it done now. So they are scared to hear what Nebraska citizens have to say. They just don't plain give a damn. Thank you. Thank you.